Hello and welcome back. Okay, video before last, I added the pipeline PCBs in. The last video, I added the clock circuit in, which gives me a whole bunch of interesting more functionality. But now I want to add a much simpler piece of functionality, which I think is actually going to be the last unique instruction I add to the processor. If I run this sieve of Eratosthenes code, you'll see it goes through two distinct phases. Firstly, it's doing the base sieve of Eratosthenes to work out the primes underneath 256, and then it uses an incremental variant of the code in order to go all the way up to 65,536. Now, when I was writing that code, I obviously had to write that as two distinct chunks of functionality, and debugging the second half was more complicated purely because it was dependent on the first chunk of code and at a slow clock rate that would take a long time to get through or at a fast clock rate you couldn't guarantee stopping the processor at the right time. What I really needed there was a breakpoint. That's a piece of functionality we're very used to in a modern debugger. What I want to do today is add the most elementary form of a breakpoint to the processor when I was running the code just now, I stopped it by changing the clock mode to single step. So now I can step through single instructions one at a time, which is actually the kind of functionality we want. So what we would like to be able to do is do the equivalent of pushing this button in software or as a result of any other piece of circuitry that we want. I'm just going to move this wire a little bit. Now, this button is connected to a line which is pulled high through this resistor, and then the button just pulls it to ground. And this is actually very similar functionality to we had over here on the reset line, where we then used the open drain output from the power management chip to kind of or its operation with the reset button. And that's actually a perfectly respectable way for us to do it here. So the open drain here refers to the drain terminal on a MOSFET. So I thought that was going to be a good place to start. So what I've got here is a 2N7000 N-channel MOSFET. So this has source, gate and drain as the pins, as opposed to base collector and emitter we're used to seeing on bipolar transistors. But I can just drop that in right here. So I've wired it such that the drain is already connected to the signal. The source I can take to ground. So then with the gate low, it continues to operate as before. But if we bring that high, it switches back down to the stop state. So I believe the break output from pipeline stage two I wired to this little pin here, and that should give us the electrical connection we need to implement this. What we need to do now is add a break instruction to the assembler and to pipeline stage two. Okay, so here's my code for the Civa Veritostenes. You can actually see here, there's a leftover line of code that was jumping through to the second portion that I was using during that debugging before. But now we're going to try just putting a break instruction in. Also right at the end of the code, we can use that break instruction to properly freeze the processor as well when we're done, treating it more as a halt in that situation. Okay, it's complaining that we haven't got a break instruction yet, so we need to add that. So here's the new instruction we need to handle. Now we need to actually add the break line. Which is the most significant bit in our control word.
So on this occasion, we are literally just setting that break line. Now, something I thought might be quite interesting is we could quite readily add an instruction that was a conditional break on the status of some of the flags, although we could just write a conditional branch operation in order to implement that in code. But I might add a break if equal or break if not zero at some point. Right, so pipeline 2b is the only one that's changed as well as the program ROM. Let's get that programmed in. Okay, let's give this a go. So the hope is I'm going to switch the clock into free running mode. It will complete that first section of prime number searching up to 256. And then it's going to hit the break point instruction and the break line here will come high, which is this white wire here. That will activate the gate on the MOSFET, which will basically be the equivalent of pushing this button by uh, pulling this line down to ground. There we go. It's worked perfectly. That's awesome. So I, I have to step past there and then I can have the code run on. And in the same way now, it drops back to the break state. But I can continue to step through there. Oh, that's great. That is actually going to be really useful when I come on and start looking at writing some bigger, more complicated programs further down the road. Okay, even though this is a very simple circuit, let's go and add that back to the EDA schematic so we don't forget it. Okay, now need to find that MOSFET. Right, I'm not as familiar with the symbols, but I've just had a quick look. So this is the drain here. And that should be it. Now, I have had a few people comment on my videos that they don't like the way I use some of the VCC and ground net symbols, particularly horizontal VCCs they don't like. And the problem with that is, of course, I'm basically entirely self-taught when it comes to this stuff. But there are lots of conventions in programming that seem over the top to people first starting out. And once you've done a lot of it, you start to realize that it is handy, particularly when you're programs get to larger scale. So I'm going to try and do a bit of a clean up on here and uh, see if people like that. I believe the idea is you have ground along the bottom and VCC along the top where possible. Not sure what I should be doing differently there. Okay, that one does feel a little bit neater. 
Okay, this only has two wires going between these two chips. Oddly enough, I swapped these around from what we had on the breadboard when I made this circuit. And now it looks like maybe putting it back is the right thing to do. Some of these would definitely have been a lot easier if you just made it with the right convention to start with. Okay, well, that's as much as I can easily do right now. I think these could have been made slightly nicer if I'd uh, rearranged the chips slightly, but that would have taken me a lot more time. So go on, give me a feedback. Was this worth doing or did I do it all wrong again? Okay, so this new breakpoint functionality is going to be handy when I come to write some bigger programs. It does occur to me that I could actually wire a number of different things into this. I could very easily go through an inverter and attach it to the memory write line so I can stop on a memory write, or I could actually wire in some logic to the address lines over here and implement a memory breakpoint. So the first time I read or write to a specific address in memory, I would be able to stop the processor. I don't know whether to do that on a PCB or do that on a breadboard, but I think something that I could fit in here easily might be, uh, might be pretty handy. Well, I hope you found this interesting. I found it quite amusing just adding a single MOSFET to the circuit in order to um, add that extra piece of functionality when a lot of the other functionality I've added of late has involved quite complicated circuits. In some ways, that kind of makes me happy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.